And uh, so we have uh, ambitious goals to talk about impact of research on innovation and innovation on education process. We heard a lot uh, in plenary session on this topic and I hope having such excellent uh, scholars, colleagues here, the beauty of the combination is that uh, we represent all different uh, disciplines. I am an uh, economist, Francesco is educator, yeah, pedagogy, and uh, uh, Branislav is physicist, and Vladimir is political scientist. Besides that, he has uh, also... And mechanical engineering. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, let's, let, uh, let's start with, we have the... Okay. Somehow, oh, this one, okay. Good, I will, no. Okay, you see the, uh, always asking the class, the youngest student to, uh, to if I have any problems. O okay, okay, no. Good, coming, okay, good. So these are the uh, uh, panelists. I am Zbigniew uh, Bochniarz from Kozminski University. I am also affiliated with the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance uh, at the University of Washington in Seattle uh, since 2007. And then uh, uh, we have uh, here uh, Francesco uh, Arcidiacono. I, yeah from uh, Switzerland, from University of Teacher Education, from Biel, and uh, Branislav Jelenkovic, uh, Professor of Institute of Physics in Belgrade, from Be uh, Serbian Academy of Art and, oh, <laughs> Academy of Science and Art. Uh, this is my bias, being from uh, World Academy of Art and Science, you know, to put uh, different order. And then we have Vladimir uh, Popovic, Professor, State Secretary, Minister of Education, and uh, Science and Technology Development of Serbia. So we have a great combination, and we will start uh, uh, our session. I put my timer to really keep my time first uh, to, to give a good example to uh, avoid exceeding 10 minutes, uh, okay, good. So I would like uh, to share some of my comments as a practitioner because uh, I teach, this is the 52nd year of my academic activities. And let me make these three uh, basic statements. So there is no good education without new knowledge. And the, and the knowledge comes from research, in either from basic research or from applied research. And this is particularly the case of graduate education, the master and PhD level. I agree with uh, Ivanka Popovic uh, this morning that we should give the uh, basic fundamentals to at the bachelor degree. However, I see many good examples when we are getting, even at that level, uh, bachelor students involved in the research. And then, for instance, at the University of Washington, we are doing type of, uh, sponsored by Boeing, by the way, competition, to have project with three different disciplines, focusing on current problems. So boosting the uh, imagination and uh, encouraging to, to work together. So, uh, since advances of uh, digital transformation, we're talking about uh, industrial revolution for zero, uh, the creation of knowledge has been so much accelerated that it, it, we, we got that type of 
cognitive gap, you know, we cannot absorb as much as we are getting. So the innovation should help us uh, to uh, pick up, absorb the most important uh, knowledge to education process, starting from ICT technologies through artificial uh, 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 intelligence and uh, augmented uh, uh, real, virtual reality to a symbiotic uh, uh, autonomous system. I would like to talk uh, briefly. I mean, my colleague uh, Rodolfo was talking uh, today a bit. There is a feedback also from education. We need to on the research, we need to keep, you know, in mind that the quality of education, quality of innovation, and the quantity depends on how we teach. So this is why I am big fan, and those who used to work with me, of uh, person-centered education in building of, of learning community. Okay. So I expect that we'll have excellent uh, panel and excellent discussion, even if we are from different disciplines, to look for some conclusions which will help us to apply smoothly the best uh, results of the research and inspire our students with new knowledge. Preparing myself for this uh, uh, session, I was inspired by two events. One uh, happened on uh, October 14, when the Royal Academy of Science Nobel Committee announced uh, the award in uh, economics. First time received young, uh, relatively young uh, economist, and also in the area of uh, experimental uh, research on uh, uh, focusing on elevating global uh, poverty. Uh, Abji, uh, Abjit uh, Ban Banajeri, uh, Esther uh, from India, originally Esther from Daflo from France, both from uh, MIT and uh, uh, Michael Kramer from Harvard. What was interesting that this, this is an uh, innovative uh, example of applied research. They use transdisciplinary uh, evaluation methods, uh, including med medical sciences, pharma uh, pharmacology, and uh, they found uh, a most effective way to uh, enhance human capital uh, to fight with poverty. What was very interesting uh, in, in the statement of the Nobel Committee that during the application of 20 years of this method, they helped about 400 million people. So what is interesting, and uh, this is what we discussed today about all these barriers, obstacles, those guys were brave enough to cross transdisciplinary discipline. They capitalized on several schools of economics, institutional, behavioral, contract economics, including neoclassical <laughs> economics. So, and then uh, they serve now uh, in academia and uh, teaching next generation. So this is a big hope. And then the second event happened in my hometown, Lublin, eastern part of Poland, where uh, on October 20th year were uh, French, prominent French uh, biophysicist, biochemist, and biologist Pierre uh, Joliot uh, received the honorary uh, doctorate from Maria Curie Skłodowska. By the way, he is the grandson of Maria Curie Skłodowska. He stated in his acceptance speech that the race for uh, higher competitiveness and profitability, profitability in short terms, which is the base for a contemporary society, leads to serious limiting of researchers' creativity and their innovativeness. Such policy, which is responsive for serious, I mean, profitability, I mean, paradoxically is counterproductive to its goal to the mission of academia, I could add. He also emphasized that research is a form of artistic activity. 
which relies on creativity combined with high level of technical proficiency, competency. And finally, he said, the effective research system based on sustainable interactive between two types of research, basic and applied, will grant, uh, 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 the, uh, you know, is very uh, critical and depends to large extent to design such evaluation process that will grant sufficient space for young researchers with their freedom and creativity. So again, the research comes to education, how we shape in education process new researchers, whether there are open-minded, there are uh, risk takers and so on. Okay, so how to get uh, access to new knowledge? You know, you are teaching uh, uh, particular graduate courses. Well, first of all, you need to mobilize your own faculty to do research and share the research and get students involved in, in the research, particularly at the master and PhD level. In fact, you know, we in the in US, we, we, the most the research is done by our master and PhD students. Uh, encourage uh, faculty members and students to take uh, advantage for uh, mocks. I guess <laughs> it was mentioned many times. I don't need to explain this. I mean, particularly from the top university. I mean, Stanford started 2012 with Coursera, Harvard with edX and other MIT with open courseware. We have now over 700 universities offering over 10,000 courses. I didn't check all 10,000, but I am sure that those from the top universities are worth it to learn. And then having the access to them, you can skip repeating these texts and focus what comes out from your own research. Because this is the best inspiration for students when they are coming fresh results from your research. And then, Applying artificial intelligence to faculty uh, and students, self-learning, self-examination, and teamwork. You can do a lot of with our AI in terms of time scheduling and so on and so on. And finally, uh, emerging innovation, symbiotic education with digital twin. This is something what uh, inspired me at the conference organized by Rodolfo Florini in Milano, this uh, uh, two professors, uh, Canadian uh, Kinsner and Italian Sarako presented the model. Okay, time to finish, okay. Good, so let me summarize this. Uh, to help to cope with the doubling knowledge very often now every 20 30 years we expect that within 10 years maybe they will be doubling within one year or 18 months so we could use the symbiotic digital twin uh, complementary uh, digital relations between individuals and digital twins you know what is digital twin? We have already uh, applications in, for machines, but also we don't know how look our digital twins uh, possessed by intelligence agencies, marketing agencies. We already have digital twins. We need to be aware. But if we would be able to uh, apply in education, we can speed up the process to focus on personalized needs instead of going through all this. So this is a great opportunity and, uh, and uh, challenges, including uh, correcting unethical behavior. I mean, it could be from intelligence company uh, already practicing uh, uh, digital twin. And barriers and threats. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to find uh, faculty teaching, uh, doing research. We need to find good incentives. Uh, we need to uh, also build uh, confidence in our partners, and uh, private companies, public companies, and in which we want to do research and help them. 
And then we need to be aware, uh, we, I, I heard not enough, I believe, to, to mention that then we are facing a gray, uh, growing wave of nationalist xenophobia and intolerance. And then led to the changes in national curricular reforms in some countries. Unfortunately, it's happening to, to my country uh, when you see the, in the uh, recommended framework curricula for the first, third grade, that the main goal of education is teaching patriotism. And for the classes from the four to, to six, the main goal is to increase national identity. What type of citizens we, we will educate? A lot of history, a lot of old stuff, and instead of openness. So this way I see that this type of changes in the curricula, I am sure that it, it, the, the, the politics and ideology interferes with the curricula in many countries, but it helps just to reproduce uh, own conservative uh, electorate, particularly in the case of Poland in rural areas. Thanks God we have dynamic growth of uh, private and non-public uh, uh, schools which follow the universal human values, you know, uh, in their curricula with uh, person-centered uh, approaches. So anyway, uh, what it does it lead? We are going to have in public school people less educated who does not know who was Leonardo da Vinci or Napoleon or don't know anything about French Revolution. And then we will have the elites educated in the private non-public school. So these are the serious problem I would like to share with you. And then we, we were looking how we can avoid this. So this is enough on my side. Uh, and then I would like to ask the next speaker, which is Francesco. Yes, please take the floor. Thank you. And then uh, we, are, we, we set 10 minutes for each of us to have about 25, 30 minutes for the discussion uh, questions, okay? Thank you, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So waiting for the technology. Okay. So uh, just to, to introduce myself, I'm Francesco Arcidiacono. As Bigne have said, uh, we are a very uh, heterogeneous panel, uh, but this is for me a source of uh, inspiration. In fact, I will do some exercise that is quite uh, strange or let's say uh, different from what I'm doing uh, normally because uh, I'm educational psychologist working at University of Teacher Education and usually I attend conferences in which we are, we belong to the same background, so we zoom in very specific uh, topics and I take this occasion, uh, as we are uh, coming from different fields, to zoom out and to make a kind of reflection also on what we are doing. So my presentation maybe should seem quite different or uh, exotic, but is uh, a journey, and I would like to take you uh, with me in this journey. So just to precise uh, um, the institution in which I'm working, uh, is an institution that is devoted to train future teachers at different levels. So we have bachelor and master programs for primary, secondary, and special needs education teachers. But we offer also uh, lifelong learning for in-service teachers. So uh, finally, we accompany teachers during their career. And uh, another specific uh, uh, aspect of my institution is that we are, uh, uh, you know, in Switzerland we have uh, 26 cantons and we are covering three of them, Bern for the French speaking part, Jura and Neuchâtel, so the name of our institution, Bejun, uh, is related to this uh, three cantonal uh, um, unity. And this is also quite interesting because we are at the border between uh, 
French-speaking part of Switzerland and German-speaking part of Switzerland, and within our institution there are different cultures also according to this. So from my pers educational perspective, this is also uh, very, very interesting. So as I said, uh, uh, my idea is to talk about this singular experience, singular not because it's special, there is nothing special, but it's specific. But uh, however, although it is specific, uh, there are many points that represent the actual reality of uh, universities of teacher education in our country in Switzerland. And uh, uh, we were uh, um, with colleagues, uh, we were uh, thinking about, uh, you know, because the title is impact of research, okay? As you said, and as the previous speaker uh, during the plenary session said, it's difficult to say, uh, to measure impacts or to, to understand whether we are really doing some impacts. But for us, the fact to reflect about this experience uh, should be also some kind of a way to have an impact on our organization and then to promote change for future education. So the first uh, point is that we recognize um, a very a big uh, gap between uh, the community of researchers and the community of teachers. Two separate worlds where there are a lot of researchers, they are working on education, they are saying teachers have, must do, teachers uh, have to have this skill, this competence and so on, but teachers are somehow the object of this. They are often, uh, uh, um, let's say, taken into account as participants, but not as main uh, builder of our research. So we were thinking about it because if we would like to train the future teachers to be reflective teachers, probably they have to be taken into account in this journey about research. And then the second point was concerning, okay, if really we would like to implement these aspects, what we are offering now and what we could offer. So this idea to empower their professional capacities through research activities, through participating in research and not just to, let's say, uh, just uh, be uh, exposed to research and to understand what is research in theory. So this uh, uh, combination of research and theory was uh, one of the preoccupation. And the third point was also related to the environment in which we are uh, acting. Because of course I can uh, train a teacher, a future teacher, and he or she could be really convinced about uh, the prominence and the relevance of research, but then if in the school the principal, the other colleagues are not sharing this, probably uh, this impact of research will decrease. So we were thinking about these three points, and in this uh, reflection I prepared for this very short talk, I will focus on how we change our organization at three different levels, institutional, pedagogical, and scientific. So the first level, as I said, is the institutional one. As institution training future teachers, we have also to guarantee that we are taking into account not only the content that the teacher should uh, teach, this is okay, uh, well done by different faculties, our, uh, our students are students that uh, already had MA, uh, master degree in uh, physics or biology or uh, French uh, and so on. Some of them, let's say a big part of them uh, are also PhD, so they know, uh, they, they have a good knowledge of the content of what they have to teach, but what you have to do is to work with them about pedagogy to teach. So to combine and to, to, to make uh, for them clear the interrelation between uh, teaching and learning. And what we have done is uh, a process that was not linear. I tried to avoid some linear representation, but even this circle was not so easy. There were different steps in which we were going back, uh, trying to understand, uh, uh, to define again, in which we, we, we were starting from our local community, instead to start from, from some general uh, understanding. So with them, we were trying to understand how we can modify our institution, how we can rebuild an institution that should be at the service of the community, of the teacher community, of the school community, including 
as much as uh, possible the, all the actors in DIN. And so we were uh, working with them then to test some hypotheses, to go back, to redefine, to try to evaluate. And one of the outcome of this is uh, uh, what I uh, say that the, um, at, the, at the bottom, uh, we create a new role in our institution at university that is the role of teacher researchers. So we have now teachers that are working in schools, but they are also working at university, not just because they are very passionate and in their free time, but they are enrolled at university. So part of their work as teacher is to work at the university and to work with, let's say, regular researchers to implement projects and to contribute. So we try to shift from this uh, uh, position of a teacher right, like passive and uh, only the subject, the participant of the research, to some conceptor of the research with the researcher. And the same with students. We try to involve them by giving a, a, a big part of the curriculum devoted to their activity in research. The second point was at the pedagogical level. Uh, because, of course, if we would like to change the structure of our, of our uh, institution, we have to think also about the consequences. We cannot say, okay, it should be nice to have uh, teacher researchers uh, to teach research if we don't change also our way to, uh, to teach them. Uh, so in that sense, we were uh, uh, concerning about uh, two uh, main points. Uh, one is uh, the uh, contextual nature of uh, teaching research or doing research with them. So in our, uh, in our um, way of presenting research, we don't want to convince them that their future is to become researchers. This is not at all the goal. The goal is to work with them in order to make them reflexive teachers that are capable to act in their environment, in their situation, in their context, to evaluate how learning is tied to its context. So how then they can transfer knowledge from a context to another. And the other point was to work on uh, a new concept of evaluation, to take them in this uh, idea that we need uh, to define uh, and measure what is uh, meaningful for them and for the students. Because uh, if we enroll them in this process that is new for them as for us, we have also to think how to assess it in a very formative way. So our previous model was not corresponding to the new reality. So in that sense, uh, all the type of relations at the pedagogical level, content level, but also learning level, were changing. And now we are uh, very happy to work with them in order to establish this. And then, uh, uh, of course, there was a change also for us as, uh, let's say, normal researchers, or regular, sorry, not normal, regular researchers. Uh, I will conclude. Um, to uh, identify new topics that uh, should be interesting and informative for us to continue in this journey, but also to improve this interest for research in education from the perspective of future teachers. And of course, uh, uh, in order to do this, we were uh, identifying uh, different topics that could belong to ways of thinking, of working, uh, different uh, tools that are available or not in the school. but. Uh, uh, Main points concern dig digitalization in education. This has been uh, uh, one of the key topics uh, in, uh, in different um, talks. But also creativity, socio-materiality. So not only to produce tools, innovative tools, but uh, to work with teachers on how to use, which is the frame, because I can create no matter uh, how many apps or uh, environment, but I have to work with them to create the frame in which this is uh, exactly what they want and they understand how to use. And to conclude, let's go back uh, to some topics uh, about uh, this conference. The first one is this idea to shift from the subject perspective to the student perspective, in our case, teacher's perspective, so uh, to create uh, skills for uh, critical thinking. 
but also to understand that we are moving towards a new paradigm that is uh, uh, emphasizing a contextual, local uh, activities, and then starting from the local reality, trying through collaboration, through the sharing, uh, to understand uh, uh, situation uh, uh, that are more, uh, more uh, general. Uh, personally, um, in our institution, we have learned that this is very long process, that we need time, that is not something we can uh, change uh, in uh, some years, uh, but we are very optimistic because we think that there is always room for improvement, and I think that we need also to be open to other uh, disciplines and other sectors because this is, uh, in our view, the future of education. So I stop here. Merci, Fidmar. <laughs> Fill it up. Uh, good, good afternoon. I hope you don't mind it. I can. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, first, uh, I, I hope you don't mind it. I can speak from here and uh, speak loudly. Huh? Okay, uh, I hope you don't mind. Yeah? Uh, anyway, I, I think you will agree with me that uh, what separates uh, good universities from not so good universities, I think it's amount of innovation and the research that's involved in their education. Uh, I believe this is the true because what innovation and the research is helping is to enhance the student learning, to develop the creati creativity thinking, so to say, and employability. And with these two things, I think this is what the education is about. I'm not an educator, I'm a researcher. So you probably know much more about education, about innovation, etc. cetera, in, the, in the education, but uh, you'll see my perspective, so to say, because all I've been doing for my life is a research. I'm Institute of Physics. It's a very, it's a very good research institute for the, for the, for the circumstances, not, not, not so close to here. But anyway, um, so how do I see innovations? What are the innovations? I see them as, as university, as faculties and departments, being able to quickly use whatever is available in terms of teaching technologies, tools, uh, into, into, the, into the education. But also, uh, it is to the universities to respond as quickly as possible to the demands that are out there for new jobs, uh, developing new fields, new courses, therefore creating a new program for students who will thinking where to come, what to choose for the education, can see at the end of the education what they can do to see their jobs. So this is what I see, how do I see innovation that, that certainly has to be required for the university to be called innovative. And the research, research is so important for the education. Well, this, you, you know who is speaking, the researcher speaking. I do think that, um, first of all, I'm not talking about the heavy research institutions. That's, that's beyond. I'm talking about some level of research, which I think is so important. I talk, I'm talking about uh, lab practices with, with, the, with, the, with the modern instruments. And that's, I think, it's really important. It's so much different if they can only listen to something in a class from observing these phenomena in, 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 in the labs. If you have ability to put your hands into the system that can basically develop that phenomena. So I don't really believe very much into these open systems, which are popping everywhere, that you can, that you can basically learn just by listening. I don't really, I'm talking about the uh, natural sciences. This probably doesn't apply to, to humanity, etc. But for the, for, for the natural sciences, I don't believe into the open. I think you ought to go through this little bit of practices to be. Okay, um, so how, okay, so what do we need in terms of the institution? 
to have a s university which can call itself, yes, we are innovative, yes, we are research-based. Well, you need a university, you, have, you need a structure, you need a, you need a management, which is aware of the importance of this. And then you have a structure that, that decision makers at the top of, of the university can project this down to the, university, to the faculties and departments. Uh, something that certainly doesn't apply in a world where faculties are completely independent, like it is the case somewhere. So you need to have this. You need to have, you need to have, you have the resources, of course. Uh, and of course, and then you need the people. So it's uh, so important. The hiring procedure at the universities for teachers, it is so important. I'm talking about this because we are aware that, is this working actually or it is not working anymore? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I don't think it's working actually. Is it? No, it's green. It's green. But, uh, hello. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, this is this what what's called a hiring procedure. It has to be open. It has not, it, it, it shouldn't allow me to hire my student, regardless how good it is. Because you're employing somebody to help you. And not only that, that's not the case in many places in the region. But when you hire somebody, you have to hire him for the certain period. Something that's very well uh, used in other systems. A tenure track. Okay, you are here, but you have a cu couple of years to show that you deserve to be here. So this is what I think the universities ought to do in development. To be able to come to the level of decent university with the innovation and the research. Well, it turns out that being innovative and research-based, it's not really enough anymore in the today's world. <coughs> what, what is happening nowadays, outside in the world, in the global world, requires the universities to, to have what I, I put down, education that's continuously evolving to meet changes, rapid changes of the globalized world down there. There are so many new technologies. They're popping out. The main technology and then the branches of technology creating jobs. So there are completely new different jobs out there since maybe last couple of years ago, decade ago. So this is putting a new pressure to the university, which wants to stay at, at, at the high level, to have innovation, which is basically, and, and, and research, which is dynamical. To meet these demands, we don't, it turns out that not so long time ago, the universities were educating people for life, not the lifetime, sorry, but until retirement. I mean, uh, for the jobs, the jobs were there and the certain jobs. Now, you don't know if the job that you're educating a student will exist in a 10 or 20 years. So things are so much different now and so much new pressure onto the universities. Uh, to, and it's, this is definitely much more, okay, this is definitely much more serious task. And it cannot be only to universities to develop this. It needs nation, it needs state to help them to come to that level, I think. And they're already in countries which are recognizing this need of the transformation of the education to such a level that can meet the demands of the fast changing technologies. And if you're interested, I think I found, well, my research. There's a very good example of national strategies. So the countries are making national strategies how to have a new education which can respond to the system. An example is, I think it's a good document to read, it's a Hungarian National Education Innovation System. It's a big document, but it's very, very useful, I think, whoever is making a national policy or strategy for the education. Also, you need, you need, you need to educate the educators. You need to educate the management of the educational institutions. So if you look what's available nowadays at the university in Europe, and I have an example of Austria and Finland, there are master degrees for educating the management. 
So this is all happen. And I think so this university should respond. And if I have just two minutes, I would like to uh, go back to, come back to the situation here. Uh, we, I don't know what to say about the level of innovation and research and different uh, faculties because I just don't know. But what I think I know is that uh, what's not good, what's slowing the system is tremendous am amount of autonomy that faculties have versus the university. And I thought this is really good. You ought to have the pyramid, really. And if the guys at the top of the pyramid don't function well, if the university is not functioning well, just replace them. But you have to have the, those people who are making the policy, policy makers, and you have, you have to know who is responsible. So this is, I think, what, and I think this applies more or less for the universities in the region. Uh, second, I think, uh, I, I, okay, uh, yeah, and this is probably something that, is, that concerns the University of Belgrade, the universities in Serbia. But if you noticed, this university is spread all over the town. And the f there's, there's a faculty which is spread all over the town. We have faculties, we have say, faculty of biology. That they're really, dis I'm not a biologist, but I know the people, they're really good researchers. They don't have a room where to put a chair, not to mention to open something new, 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 new lab, new something, regardless of what ideas they have. How can you think about anything of improvement in the, in the education, not to mention the responding to the, these fast demands, if they cannot have a chair to put anywhere? So what we need, and that is a campus. We need a campus, stupid. We need a campus with a facilities, new mo model laboratories that are put together, all, s all these people from different branches, different science, because they ought to be together. The boundaries between the science are not there anymore. More and more they, they are going ways with is something in between the sciences we know of. Thank you. Similar observation from uh, Central East European universities. Uh, they just, the faculty members, just enjoy the freedom, academic freedom, which they were depraved under previous system. But unfortunately, in many cases, the responsibility of the freedom didn't come yet. And this is the problem. I mean, this is. Uh, it's, it's much more <laughs> rigorous at American University. I, I spent tw 30 years. So, I mean, there's a good balance between academic freedom and responsibilities. Talking about responsibilities, uh, I would like to move the floor to the fourth speaker, to Vladimir. Please share us, because I mean, you have both academic experience as well as administrative experience, you know. How you execute, you know, the the responsibilities and then uh, link the research with education. Floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Vladimir Popovic, full professor of University of Belgrade, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, Automotive Engineering. And on the second place, I'm Secretary of State responsible for science and technological development in Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development. Uh, I was appointed at this current position uh, three years ago. As you know, this position is temporary position, sometimes very, very temporary. And because of that, I keep my position at the university. Before this job, I haven't any experience in, in government, but this position is very high position in our government, some kind of vice minister. And, and because of that, I think that I, that I have good, good view, good experience about our research community, especially we adopted two new laws on science and research and, and about National Science Foundation in the last year. 
First of all, I want to give you a few data about our position on, on some lists. First of all, uh, on Global Competitiveness Index, Serbia is on 65th place, 65th place among 140 countries. When we look quality of research institution, we are on the uh, 90, 90, uh, 59th place and innovation capability uh, 56th place. Uh, when we look our budget for R&D, it's about 0.92% uh, of our GDP when we look all sources for R&D. Currently, uh, we, we finance uh, 12,000 researchers which are involved in current national uh, R&D projects funded by uh, our ministry. Overall number of researchers is about 16,000. It's about uh, 4,300 researchers per million, per million people in 2018. Uh, when we look at our uh, total world production of scientific works, we are on the 52nd place in 2019 on the list of all countries, I think 200, 39 countries, and University of Belgrade is ranked on the Shanghai list on position between 400 and, and 500 place. Total number of scientific papers, according to Web of Science, is about 7,000 papers in, in the last year. Uh, Zbigniew mentioned uh, two antagonistic tribes. Francesco mentioned two separate communities. When we look at our communities, I, I see many tribes. Social humanities against other scientists, uh, natural science, basic science against others, institutes, public research institutes against faculties and university, universities and many other conflicts in community. When we try to, to change something, resisting, resistance is very hard, very hard. And th sometimes I think that better is no change is the best solution for, for all. But of course it's, it's not true. Also, somebody mentioned this morning that innovations are not possible without basic research. I completely agree with, with that opinion and it's not possible to, to develop applied, applied researchers without basic, basic science. Also, you, you mentioned way of, ways of thinking. It's a it's very difficult task for all of us to work this job, to change ways of thinking. Uh, two minutes ago, I mentioned that we adopted new law on science and research in July this year, and law on science fund adopted in December last year. Also, a science fund established as an independent implementing agency, the similar way on, on the, in the other developed countries and, and the EU, we use model of Horizon 2020 and Future Horizon Europe, and, and uh, science fund started with first call, we, we plan to, to uh, put two new calls until this year. One is connect to artificial intelligence. The uh, second is connect to cooperation with our diaspora. 
Also, we completely change our financing model when we talk about research. In the past, we have uh, so-called project financing, and in the, in the future, even in the next year, we will have a combined model of project and institutional financing. I want to, to give you some, some data about our higher education system. Uh, we have 17 accredited universities in Serbia, out of which seven are public. We have about 250,000 students at all universities and uh, 125 faculties uh, which are accredited as separate institution. It is very important for us this year Serbia became 23rd member of CERN, full member of CERN. It is very important for us, I, I again say, because we are a small country. Uh, maybe you know or you don't know that Serbia is one of the country which, which established the CERN as ex-Yugoslavia, one of the 12 countries which, which found the CERN. And why is CERN important for us, that membership? Uh, among researchers and, and uh, industrial return and so on, uh, CERN is a very good place for, for education, exists a teaching program, a students program, a master class, we organized master class in Serbia in the last few years, and so on. And, and many other possibilities for uh, our teachers to learn how to learn their, their students. Uh, I give you maybe two more numbers in, in uh, this, this short speech, but I want to give some overview our research system, our capacity in, in that manner. Also, I want to, to mention uh, competition for best technological innovation uh, existing in Serbia in the last 15 years. Uh, but, but in the first 10 years, we have only uh, competition for, for researchers and students. In the last two years, uh, we, we uh, emphasize uh, that competition on the level of, of, level of uh, secondary school teams and uh, we are very satisfied with the number of, number of teams which participate in that competition. Also, I want to mention Research Center Petnica. It's regionally very known uh, research center. Our ministry support that, that center in the last few years with 9 million euros and Additionally, through regular yearly program, we finance Petnica. Petnica deals with development of science, but also with scientific culture, scientific literacy, education, and culture, culture overall. Uh, important center for connection of education and research is Center for Promotion of Science. We also supported that institution. Uh, when you look all data, you can conclude that you that know it's not possible to develop education without research, and it's not possible to separate research and education. It's not possible to exist good education with. Uh, with very high developed research system. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Yes, I wanted to ask you, speak uh, yeah. the following question. You uh, dramatically described the situation in uh, in Poland, yeah. and uh, uh, and and the problem uh, being that uh, uh, did I get it right that the state is in charge of uh, general education and uh, it has a nationalistic kind of agenda, and that uh, families who want to avoid that have to go. Uh, in some kind of private, find some private source. What is the role of the church? Okay. Um, and the other question is, um, how do this state, which has a nationalistic agenda, how do they relate to um, uh, new technology? Uh, are they afraid of that somehow, or how do they see that? Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Ulika, for uh, good, uh, tough questions. Uh, First of all, uh, in terms of the, <coughs> the, the changes and the reform, the, uh, we have, I was talking about uh, uh, primary and secondary education, which uh, uh, was introduced in uh, 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 2017. So, all eight over 80 uh, rectors and all major uh, education institutions protested as uh, baseless, uh, not based on the research. By the way, <laughs> this is something what if you are doing research. Uh, reform, we should base on the applied research. And then introduce the reform, even uh, Polish indicators of the uh, PISA, uh, you know, uh, the uh, stuff. We were over... Uh, in, in terms of the performance of the uh, junior high school was uh, significantly above OECD uh, level. So we were like second or third after uh, Finland, which used to have for years uh, uh, excellent education. So anyway, so the, there was just ideology uh, uh, influenced the so-called framework curricula which uh, the public school, all schools should uh, apply, but you know, the, the private and non-public, they have much more flexibility. They could add and skip, you know, and so on, you know. And so th this is why we are, you know, educating really the two class, less educated. When they dropped one year, they, they have shorter now, one year, uh, because the, before it was obligatory uh, uh, six, nine years education now that is shorter, you know, to eight and then professional. So, and then the church was uh, also inf significantly influenced because religion is, uh, classes of religion are voluntary in fact, you know, but it was strong pressure to, to attend and the ethics which supposed to be alternative in many schools, particularly in rural areas, uh, was not offered. So somehow the strong pressure to attend. But you know what is happening now because of the, this reform, which teachers usually call deform, <laughs> uh, uh, introduce such heavy load and also that type of memorizing text that there is a mass skipping religious classes by students. So this is again, you know, the church influence is counterproductive. And I guess we they are going to <laughs> produce more uh, <laughs> people, I mean, they're moving them out of the uh, church. So anyway, uh, Eric and Marcel, oh, and uh, Tony, okay, good. Oh, okay. you have the microphone, you have the power. Okay, yeah, go I ahead. have the power. <laughs> okay, let's go this way, sorry. Okay, uh, very quickly. Um, I would like to have your opinion in general for any country, especially Switzerland, also, about the academic impact of research, also the relevance 
for the taxpayer. Because most research are piling and having beautiful CVs for the researcher, but uh, what's in it for me that I paid taxes? So I think this is very, very important to think about the, the impact, academic impact, because you may have basic research yeah. and relevance to society. I, I would think that most people are like uh, most people. Most are applied people. Most research should be applied. So very few, few people would be really deep theoretical thinkers. So what, uh, what would be your opinion of any of you, especially beginning with Switzerland? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Merci, Vrana. Yeah. Uh, oh, I can say a little bit about it. Uh, when you talk about uh, research and education, the role of research in education, in education, I think uh, we have to uh, distinguish uh, the level of research, the level of research institution. If you talk about uh, the heavy research institution, the leaders in research in the world, say MIT, for instance, we are happy that we collaborate with MIT. So with MIT, for example, they, they educate the high-level students. The best students actually from the world come there. 
and they have the, better, the best education, and then they, they are there, the project's there, they're paid for, to basically, to basically develop a new technology. They're getting money for new technologies, the most advanced technologies. Global technologies, that's important for everybody. When it comes down to lesser research institutions, like, like for example, University of Belgrade maybe is, I think primarily the uh, impact of research is education, to educate our students, because as I said, I don't believe in, in education without research. And of course, it's also for developing uh, new techniques, new technologies, but locally important, more or less. Something that can, as a new product, new technology, solve some of our local problems. Clean air, clean water, agriculture, whatever we are, basically, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this is how I see, it really depends where you are at. Okay. okay. Uh, just a moment, please. Uh, we have the same dilemmas in, in our country, in our community, because when you talk with researchers, uh, all of them, or almost all of them, think that economy don't understand their research. When you look economy companies, they think that researchers uh, don't give him any useful for for their job and uh, discussion about tax and and return for countries and for so for society not only for industry is is um, very often topic in, in in our community also thank you okay uh, in terms of Poland uh uh, there is a uh, type of mixed picture. Uh, Poland spent less than 1% on uh, research, you know, so it's low. And then, uh, but, uh, uh, and then uh, there are several uh, pretty good centers, but the, uh, uh, of the research uh, in terms of the, the, the physics and the chemistry and so, I mean. But uh, the problem is that uh, there is a, poor uh, implementation capacity. I mean, the, the applied research is pretty weak to commercialize it. The link between universities or uh, science, academy or science with business is very weak for many reasons, uh, tradition and so on. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we have uh, uh, more and more Polish companies, particularly uh, pharmaceutical, which really grow up pr uh, pretty fast, they started doing own research and they promote, for instance, uh, scholarships and competition for ambitious students in engineering, master student doing this, and some way picking up the best students and giving them opportunity to research, support the uh, activities, which is a good sign. And finally, uh, because in terms of uh, building uh, human capital, Poland was really tremendously successful at the beginning of transformation. We moved, you know, like we exceeded from 500 students to over two and a half million students' enrollment. What's happening? Some of them who didn't uh, get the jobs left Poland, we have like two million emigration. I mean, many of them are where I listed. And then those who stay, they are hired by development uh, uh, offices uh, of international, multinational corporations. So somehow they are developing patents there, but they are not counted for Poland. So uh, all major, I mean, Microsoft, Google, as you know, uh, you mentioned technological company, uh, you know, uh, chemical companies, they have uh, research centers, research and development centers, which hire Polish engineers, Polish scientists, you know, they are working there. So, but it is not counted. <laughs> for the country. So from that point of view, Poland is uh, 
place law, um, yeah, I mean, behind us, I guess this is Latvia, Bulgaria, or Romania. So, I mean, in European Union, we are like 25th or so, you know, uh, poor, poor innovation. So anyway, so this is, this is the, 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 the problem. Okay, uh, Eric. We started our discussion with education and we are now mainly uh, discussing research and I think I fully agree with you that the cooperation between universities and also the Academy of Sciences with industry, different kind of uh, branches of the economy is very important and it's uh, a learning process which uh, needs uh, some time. Uh, I think this transmission is very important. I would like to take one point in this area and question you as we have a representative of the government here. Uh, uh, what a kind of cooperation do you think about the, uh, in the future with the, the European uh, research programs, Horizon and Horizon Plus in the next years? And a special type is which concerns the whole area of Southeastern Asia, uh, Asia, uh, Europe is uh, research infrastructures. You mentioned this importance of uh, deep basic research and I think for this region it would be very important if all countries try to get the one of the pieces which are highly received all over Europe maybe here in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, question of about infrastructure is very important, especially for small countries. We, we try to include our institution in CERIC, ERIC uh, communities for, for, uh, for different kind of sciences. Also, uh, I mentioned CERN, I want to mention Dubna, Joint Institu Institute for uh, Nuclear Research. We signed roadmap uh, with, with Dubna 15 days ago. Also, but uh, the most important is our participation in uh, Horizon 2020, especially Horizon Europe in, in the future. We are satisfied with, with our results in Horizon 2020. We are now on the level about uh, 100 million euros in, in country and our participation, our contribution for, for seven years uh, is 120. And I think that, that we have about uh, at the end of Horizon 2020, 150 million euros overall, and we'll be satisfied with it. But for Southeast Europe, for West Balkan countries, especially important is teaming and winning program and, and conditions for, for that program. We, we discuss with colleagues from European Commission and, and we, we uh, got uh, some some um, words that we have about three billion euros for for teaming program and it is chance for Serbia and uh, similar countries. It's uh, not not expect to compete with develop uh, West universities research center, especially in in USA, and it's not possible for us. To, to develop such infrastructure which we which will be competitive with that countries and and because of that we expect that EU understand will understand our our needs and and uh, this explanation which I give you thank you uh, thank you uh, Vladimir I want to add before I will give the floor to Marcel uh, I was very critical about uh, educational reform in Poland at the primary secondary level, but we also delivered and started this year the uh, reform of higher education. 
And contrary to previous, uh, it was a real 18 months discussion. So there was wide participation. And the law is uh, pretty good, you know, with uh, uh, boards appointed with external uh, stakeholders. So somehow there will be the pressure on the result, on the responsibilities that we were talking uh, about. And also the, frag um, the way of fragmentation, we are going to have like 10, 12 research institutes. Uh, we now uh, over 20, which does not make sense. Poland probably from American perspective should have no more than four or five strong research uh, universities, probably would be the maximum. Uh, and so, I mean, things are uh, moving in this direction. Uh, we will see how it will work. This is the fresh, you know, uh, it was a start in October 1st. So we'll see how this new law on higher education will work, whether it will produce what I enjoy to see. You know, I mean, the first robotic arm was invented by third year engineering students at Stanford, period. So the students have access to research. They are doing this, you know. And then, you know, I mean, who got the skills, you know, drops off. I mean, Bill Gates uh, or Paul Allen, they were just coming to the university computer labs and they were just developing their passion. So this is what we need to open ourselves for talented students, give them a chance. And this is what is coming out from this conference. We need to have much more individualistic, you know, uh, approach to give the chance to grow those talented uh, people. Marcel, please. So we, you know, you. I'm looking for the time. Thank you, Chairman. I'm afraid that uh, this will be the last uh, discussion. Thank you, Chairman. I think also what the Rector and the Eudel, I would like to go a little bit further, but specifically my question to the panel but to Professor Popovic, Professor, you have such a wonderful job, a wonderful place as Secretary of State for Education, Science and Innovation. Fantastic place. Do you know that the young generation in this country expects a lot from you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was, I was director at CERN in Geneva for a number of years. I know the education in this country from niche, from this university here, that were very good students, that were talented persons. I also met them and I trained even a number for their doctorate degrees when I was at the Max Planck Institutes in Germany. In my director function at the European Union, a lot of money went from the European Union to the country, also via the World Bank. So quite a lot of money was here available. And I know that from the universities at Nischen here, you have very fundamental and good people in fundamental sciences. But you have also quite good people in technical sciences at your technical, the technical branch and the mechanical engineering and electronic engineering, quite good people. My question is the following. How, what are the bottlenecks in order to create here in this country, around the universities or at some places, you have there some scientific research centers, well known in the past, that nuclear center, which was fantastic center in the past. You were talking about uh, Dupna and about all. Yeah. What are really the bottlenecks in having not here in this country a lot of innovation centers? centers of innovation, mm -hmm. technology parks. What we have, for example, I'm now in Switzerland, at the ETH in Zurich, mm -hmm. at the ECO Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne at Geneva, mm -hmm. but I was professor in Delft University, and it is an enormous platform of 
the uh, innovation. Why can you not have it here? And you, your country, although that it is not member of the European Union, Yet. is also accepted in all research programs in the Horizon 2020 and also in the new one, the 21-27, you, you have also representative for that one. So my question, I am somewhat disappointed, that is not your fault, that this country doesn't show up for the future to be an important country, the China of Eastern Europe. You were saying that you have difficulties with Western Europe, but you can work together. And you have a lot of ambassadors of your country, enormous amount of ambassadors who doesn't come back. Why not motivating like Greece was doing 20 years ago to trick them back to here? Why all the bottlenecks? What is that? Why no modern, innovative innovation here in this country? Thank you, Marcel. Vladimir. Okay. Thank you. We met three years ago in my office, yeah, I uh, think. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. You, you, uh, still, you were still to reply to me on the letter which I sent. Okay. <laughs> uh, your, your question is not easy. We established few center for transfer technologies, the main universities, few years ago. At this moment, almost with no result. Um, why, why our capacity is very good? Yugoslavia, as you know, was, uh, Belgrade was capital of ex Yugoslavia, and then the main public research institutes was in Belgrade and now are in, in Belgrade. And that's the reason why we have a uh, very strong public research institutes when you compare with with uh, population with with economy of of country but uh, we have very strong border between between economy and and research community i mentioned a uh, few times that facts also uh, when you when you compare uh, budget, budget for science. You mentioned World Bank, e also IPA fund, and and so on. At this moment, this this <laughs> this moment, just this moment, we negotiate with World Bank about uh, some credit line for for uh, our our national science fund, but also for accelerator for accelerating. Uh, that's problem, we, we haven't financing for the second phase of, of um, research and, and we stop after the first step and we usually uh, don't continue in the second phase after after first step in, in research. I think that it is the, the bottleneck of our system. Mainly, it's bottleneck of a uh, similar system in, in this part of Europe, in ex-Yugoslavia. We talk with our colleagues from Slovenia, Croatia, and so on. Uh, situation is, Slovenia is, is better than situation in, in Serbia at this moment, but uh, all of us are not satisfied with with uh, that that uh, fact, that problem, and uh, I know that expectation of our community are are so big, so big, and and we because of that we establish our national science fund. Uh, we we prepare some course in direction which you mentioned. We prepare some calls for diaspora. In, in the next year, we will have one call for, for 8 million euros. It's a huge amount of money for countries, Serbia, for, for diaspora. And we will try to use 
our diaspora capacity. We know that we have very strong, especially science diaspora. Uh, for example, uh, Professor Vladan Vuletic, uh, academician Jelenkovic mentioned MIT. Professor Vladan Vuletic from MIT is the member of our steering committee of National Science Foundation and, and it's way how we can use our diaspora. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, uh, we are going to close this session. I would like to state that first, uh, there is a consensus among us that uh, there is no good education without research input. And then, uh, then the innovations are important uh, to influence effectiveness, efficiency of uh, education process. And then uh, we need to open education process for uh, research, educate students, pick up those talented individuals who are interested in uh, research and applications and in development to spend more time to grow, to raise these talents, because this is the major driver. And what was the conclusion of, uh, for me, one of the uh, uh, Milano conference I have already mentioned, that against uh, mainstream beliefs, not the ma critical mass of educated people change the world, but individuals. I mean, starting with Copernicus, you know, finishing on uh, uh, Steve Jobs or uh, Elon Musk, you know, uh, Gates or so other, you know. I mean, this is, this is the, the chance, you know, for us to, to f focus on more on individual approaches, and I hope that technologies recent and emerging will help us. Thank you very much. You were a wonderful participant. Thank you very much, panelists.